What's going on guys, my name is Matt and today we're going to be checking out a laptop that goes for around $1200 on Amazon and only $900 at Micro Center. This laptop is the MSI Katana GF66 and on paper it seems like a decent value but as you know specs don't tell the whole story which is why today I'm going to be unboxing, testing, and giving you my thoughts on this machine. We'll be looking at features, materials, thermals, noise, gaming performance, and even streaming performance. All of this should allow you to make the decision for yourself on whether or not this laptop is worth it or if you should look for other options. Now before we get further into the video, I want to give a big shout out to Micro Center who I've partnered up with to make this video. Like I said earlier, this laptop retails at $1200, but you can get it in store at Micro Center for only $900. Now if you don't know about Micro Center, it's basically a one stop shop for all of your tech needs and is by far the best place to buy PC parts in person. What's even cooler is by just grabbing the coupon linked in the description and going in store, you'll be able to get a 240GB SSD absolutely free, no purchase required. Also on Micro Center's site, you can find their PC builder to help you part out a system and their build showcase where you can show off your build or get inspiration from others. Thanks again to Micro Center for partnering up with me for this video and let's get back to your regularly scheduled content. So getting back to the video, the laptop arrived in this relatively nondescript box. There's not any specs on the box itself, but it does have a sticker stating the $1200 retail price. My unit has actually been used before, so the unboxing experience for me was just the laptop protected by two cardboard holders and the power adapter. With that being said, yours should come in a more ornate box with more durable packing foam and some paperwork. Holding the laptop for the first time, I noticed a few things. It didn't feel too hefty for a 15.2 6 inch gaming laptop, but it did feel very plasticky and the top cover instantly got fingerprints on it which we'll talk more about the material choices later on in the video. On the left side of the laptop I found the power input, some venting, and two USB type A ports, one of which is USB 3.2 Gen 1 and the other is USB 2. The right side features a headphone mic combo port, another USB type A, along with a USB type C, both of these run at USB 3.2 Gen 1 speed. On the side, there's also an HDMI port capable of 4K at 60Hz, along with an RJ45 Ethernet jack. The back of the laptop just has two vents, and flipping it over, we find a ton of vents along with four rubber feet that elevate the laptop up in an attempt to allow the system to get plenty of fresh air. The top cover, like the rest of the outside surfaces, is plastic, but whatever type they picked is not good as it's very hard not to leave a ton of fingerprints on it. OnePlus is the only MSI logo on the outside as one stamped into the top, making the outside of this look relatively professional. Opening it up, we find a 15.6 inch screen with a large bottom bezel but relatively small side bezel. The keyboard is red accented and also has a mini numpad. The trackpad is offset to the left side and the surfaces on the bezel and keyboard deck are both plastic. Turning it on for the first time, I was greeted by the red keyboard backlighting and the typical Windows setup screen. Getting into Windows, the first thing I did was look for any bloatware. There were a few MSI apps pre-installed, but the main offender was the pre-installed Norton Security, which I promptly uninstalled, forfeiting the 60-day free trial. And they asked me why I was uninstalling, so I provided them with some constructive criticism on their software. Once this was done, I went and checked for updates. There were a bunch of Windows updates, so I did those along with an update for the graphics drivers. And once those were done, I was ready to start downloading and testing some games. But before we get into gaming performance, let's power this guy back down down and open up the bottom panel. This is so we can look at and discuss all of the internal components like the CPU, GPU, RAM, and storage. Flipping it over, we find 11 Phillips head screws we need to remove, one of which is under this factory seal sticker. Luckily, this didn't say anything about voiding your warranty, but I have no idea how MSI handles warranty claims on systems with a broken seal versus ones with the seal intact. Once the screws were removed, I was able to pry the bottom off by undoing a bunch of clips, which gave me access to the internals. At the top of the internal bay, we find the cooling system for both the CPU and the GPU. The CPU in the system is the Intel Core i7-11800H. 
This is an 8 core, 16 thread CPU running on the Tiger Lake architecture. This has a stated turbo boost of up to 4.6 GHz, but we will look at its actual clock speeds during the benchmark section. Having 8 cores and 16 threads in a portable package like this is pretty awesome and is great for people wanting to do workstation applications on this machine like video editing. Also under this cooling system is the NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti. This is a pretty good 1080p laptop GPU and from what I've seen it performs on average very similarly to a laptop 2060. It's great for playing modern games at 1080p 60fps but does have one major downside which comes in the form of its VRAM size. See the 3050 Ti only has 4GB of video memory which can be a hindrance in some games. If you're playing more popular FPS and free to play games this really shouldn't be a problem at all but if you're wanting to play the latest and greatest AAA titles for at least the next year or two then saving up for an RTX 3060 laptop may be the best option. With all that being said, the combination of the 3050 Ti and i7 offers a ton of gaming and workstation performance. The cooling system in this laptop features dual fans and a few shared heat pipes between the CPU and GPU. There are four heat pipes, one of which is isolated with its own fan and is meant for GPU cooling. Again, you'll be able to see noise and thermal performance later in the video, so make sure to stick around for that. Below the CPU die are the DIMM slots for our memory. Below these little covers, we find 16GB of dual channel RAM running at a respectable 3200MHz. It's nice to see MSI use relatively fast dual channel RAM as this will aid performance on this system. The only downside of dual channel RAM is the fact you'll need to buy an entire new kit to upgrade versus just popping in another stick if it was just a single channel kit. There's a max capacity of 64GB which is nice to know for people wanting to use the system as a mobile workstation. Below the GPU fan we find the Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 card and while most of my testing was done with Ethernet I found no problem at all with the built-in Wi-Fi or the built-in Bluetooth. Below the Wi-Fi card is a slot for a SATA drive. The main storage device is a 512GB NVMe drive installed above the battery. This is a relatively basic Gen 2 drive, but it works great for a gaming system. Unfortunately, this is the only M.2 slot on this machine, which could be a deal breaker to some, as having dual M.2 slots is a pretty common feature, even found on something like the $550 Walmart laptop I checked out a while back. The battery below this drive is a 4700 mAh unit that does an alright job of keeping the system running, but from my testing and from others, I found the battery life on the machine is only around 3 hours, which is towards the lower end of comparable systems, with many offering 6 plus hours of battery life. Flanking either side of the battery are these stereo downfiring speakers. These work alright, I've definitely heard much better built-in speakers, but I'm a headphone guy so I'm not the best at judging this aspect of the machine. All in all, the internal layout is pretty nice, but I would have liked to see an extra M.2 slot a larger battery, and a bit higher quality speakers. With that being said, gaming laptops are all about compromises, and I think MSI did a decent job of equipping this machine with good specs for the price. Closing the bottom back up and reinstalling all the screws meant it was time to start testing this machine. I decided to test 6 different games with a range of difficulties to give you a decent understanding of how this system performs. Starting things off, I tested Rainbow Six Siege, a popular relatively easy to run FPS game. I tested using the built in benchmark at the very high preset. Doing this resulted in an impressive 241 FPS average and 1% lows of 182. This is really good performance in my opinion and should be enough for competitive play. Next up is Fortnite, I test this game at 1080p Pro settings, which is epic view distance, high textures, and pretty much everything else set to low. I hopped into a Team Rumbles match and saw an overall average of 186, with 1% lows of 61. Overall, the experience was pretty smooth and enjoyable, and this should be enough performance for casual and competitive play. Next up is CSGO, another easy to run esports game. I tested at 1080p low settings and hopped into a match on Dust2. Doing this resulted in a 361 FPS average with less impressive 1% lows of 52. For the final competitive esports game, we're looking at Apex Legends. I tested this game with a mix of medium and high settings. Doing this resulted in a 115 FPS average and 1% lows of 81, which was an enjoyable experience, but if you're willing to drop the settings to low, you could probably get a 144 FPS average. The final two games are AAA titles, the first is Shadow of the Tomb Raider which I tested using the built-in benchmark at 1080p high settings. 
Doing this resulted in an 80 FPS average with 1% lows of 56. Finally, I tested Borderlands 3 at 1080p high settings using the built-in benchmark. Doing this resulted in an average and 1% lows of 63 and 46 respectively. This is great to see the systems able to play a modern AAA title like Borderlands 3 at 60 plus FPS and shows that this laptop can run pretty much any game you throw at it. In terms of temps and noise, the CPU was sitting in the upper 70s to upper 80s the majority of the time while gaming, and the GPU was sitting around the lower to upper 70s most of the time. These are pretty good temps, but they come at the cost and that is in the form of noise. This is a pretty noisy laptop, and here's a sound test of the laptop at idle versus the laptop under a full gaming load. Here's the laptop at idle. As you can hear, it's not very loud, and for more reference, here's a normal mouse click. As you can hear, this machine is pretty loud. I wouldn't call it obnoxiously loud, but it is approaching that point. So now let's talk about streaming. I tested streaming Fortnite to Twitch with an output of 1080p 60fps at 6000 kilobits per second. I played Fortnite at 1080p Pro and limited the FPS to 60. It was nice to see there was smooth performance on both the stream end and on my end while gaming. If you're wanting to stream with this machine, it's definitely doable, but again, with the noise levels, you'll want to pick the mic that you use carefully, ensuring you get one that will isolate your voice well. In terms of general usage of this machine, it fits fine in my backpack, and at around 5 pounds, it's decently heavy, but pretty in line with a lot of systems sporting a similar price and performance level. The keyboard, while annoying to look at with all of the red, works well and is probably slightly above average in terms of laptop keyboards in my experience. The trackpad is fine. It's not glass or anything, but the tracking works well and multi-touch gestures also can be performed with ease. This is just a personal preference thing, but I hate trackpads offset to the left. I'm so used to centered trackpads that I would place my finger where I thought was to the left end to click and would end up doing nothing because I was actually just pressing the center of the trackpad. Beyond this, while resting my hand on WASD, I noticed part of my palm would be touching the trackpad. This leads to the potential of false inputs which could be detrimental in competitive gaming. The screen on this machine is also decent. It's a 1080p IPS display with a refresh rate of 144Hz. The viewing angles are decent and the colors are okay, but it's not as vibrant or bright as a lot of other IPS panels that I've experienced in the past. Also, here's a quick test of the internal camera and microphone. The internal microphone and camera aren't very good, but that is to be expected. These will work fine for stuff like Zoom calls, but if you are wanting to stream, you're probably going to want to pick up a separate camera to do that. In terms of materials, I'm not a big fan of the plastic used on the top cover or the keyboard deck. It's this weird semi-soft touch material that attracts fingerprints like crazy. All in all, this $1200 gaming laptop packs a good amount of features and performance for the price. So now is the time to answer the question of whether or not I think that it's worth it. If you have a micro center near you and can live with the below average battery life, then at $900, I think the system offers an amazing value. With that being said, at the full retail price of $1,200, things start to get a little iffy. The MSI Katana is up against a lot of competition at this price point. I don't think this is a bad system by any means, but I think you need to look at the compromises carefully and decide for yourself whether or not it's worth it for you. As a mobile editing or streaming workstation, I think this is a good option, but if all you're doing is gaming, you may want to look into a system that has a slightly lower end CPU, but also includes an RTX 3060, which an i5-3060 laptop combo can be easily found at this $1200 price point. For me personally, I find there are too many compromises and small inconveniences that add up to a very meh. Again, I don't think this is a bad laptop, and for some it may be perfect, but I would definitely explore your options beyond the MSI Katana, as there are plenty at the $1200 price point. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. Thanks again to Micro Center for partnering up for this video. Again, you can get a free 240GB SSD just by grabbing the coupon in the description and heading in store. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.